Welcome to geothoughts.eu. Here are the highlights of geopolitical developments between November 14 and 20. U.S. President Biden met his Chinese counterpart Xi for the G20 summit in Bali. The meeting took place in a period in which bilateral relations between both sides are at odds over disagreements regarding Taiwan. Both stressed the need for fixing bilateral ties, while neither side gave concessions. Biden said that the U.S. has not changed its position on Taiwan and will defend it if attacked. Yet he added that he doesn't believe a new Cold War will happen and that China will not invade Taiwan. Xi, on the other hand, said that there is room for peaceful coexistence while both sides are prospering and that there is no zero-sum game in which one rises and the other falls. The key takeaway from this meeting is the continuation of the current status quo between the two great powers, testing each other for expanding their influence this year's UN Climate Summit, which took place in Egypt, was historic. Developed countries agreed to create a fund to be given to developing countries to combat climate change after the EU took the initiative. Rich countries have been resisting the creation of a such fund that was demanded by developing countries. Yet the details of this remarkable deal are to be decided at next year's summit in the United Arab Emirates. The Black Sea Grain Deal, which allows the exportation of Ukrainian grain by opening a safe corridor in the Black Sea was extended for four more months. The UN Secretary General Guterres welcomed the extension which lessens global food shortages. Upon the extension, Ukrainian President Zelensky stated that Ukraine would remain the guarantor of global food security and that since the agreement was reached, 11.1 million tons of agricultural products have been shipped. For now, it seems that a possible global food crisis remains solved. Swedish investigators found traces of explosives at the site of the Nord Stream explosions, confirming that there was sabotage to the pipelines. Danish and Swedish teams have been investigating the explosion site to find evidence of what had happened to the Nord Stream pipelines carrying natural gas from Russia to Germany under the Baltic Sea, making them the two most significant energy sources for Europe's energy supply. After the explosions, Russia had accused the United Kingdom of sabotage while London had declared that Russia was responsible for the attacks to divert the world from its failures in Ukraine. Turkish Defense Ministry declared that Turkish air forces bombed 89 Kurdish militant bases in northern Syria and Iraq. The operation came after a bomb attack in Istanbul, which was carried out by Kurdish militants from northern Syria, according to the Turkish Ministry of Interior Affairs. Turkey has conducted three military operations so far in northern Syria against Kurdish militants which are organically linked to the PKK according to Ankara. The PKK is considered a terrorist organization by the EU and the United States. We finish this week's highlights with tragic news regarding humanity. The UN Human Rights Office stated that both Ukraine and Russia tortured prisoners of war during the nine-month-long war. The conclusion was reached after the UN investigators interviewed over 100 prisoners of war from each side of the conflict. That was all for last week's top geopolitical developments from across the world. Thank you for watching. See you next week.